Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only Trent set of DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called the Perfect Temptress. So the recipe calls for one and a half ounces of Casamigos tequila, one ounce of prickly, one ounce of prickly pear puree, 0.75 ounces of agave, 0.75 ounces of lime juice. And to make the Perfect Temptress, you are going to combine all ingredients in a shaker over ice and shake. Strain over fresh ice and garnish with a salted rim and lime. I probably wouldn't garnish it with a salted rim. It would probably just be a plain rim. But the perfect temptress in honor of Temptation Island airing the same day that Cocktails, new the new episode of Cocktails comes out. Hey, Temptation Island. What's up? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> I'm scared. I watched the first episode. <sighs> I, n- I didn't see the casting special. It wouldn't load up. I was like, fuck this app. <laughs> and then you said that it was on YouTube, so I watched it at work, naturally. <laughs> and then I was like, you were cute. You did good. The girls, I'm sorry. You probably made friends with some of the girls. You didn't help them with their, their intro lines for well, the pageant. It's so funny because we couldn't we couldn't help each other. Like you came up with what you came up with, and then they would either tweak it or change your shit, and you didn't oh, have theirs were whack as fuck. <laughs> Yours was good, and then the couples are boring. It's like I see why y'all needed to spice things up and come to the island and get tempted. So do they cut people off? Like do people there get are eliminated, or how does it work? There are definitely eliminations. So. They, I, I, I'm wondering, like, you know, you never know how the show is going to be edited, like, there, but there are eliminations. Okay, based on what? Based on chemistry. Chemistry. Okay. If the guys are interested in you, and if basically if they're not interested in you, they're sending you home. Um. So you just get well, rejected. Well, I've already picked some people that I want to go home because I wasn't either <laughs> feeling their look or what they said, and I was just like, mm, you're not ready for TV. But, you know... <laughs> You're not ready for TV, bitch. I can't read Because, you know, I love reality TV. And I like to be entertained. And it's like, bitch, you got to turn it up. Don't be, you know, you got to... Hello? Do you want your camera time or not? So, anyway. I'm ready for next week since I already watched this week's. I want to see what happens. Yeah. I need the singles to get more camera time. I, Do y'all hear that? Did USA? you see the single guys? Some of the single guys I hope to run into one day in life because, you know, we Who? didn't get to meet them. There was I one, saw one. The I big, tall, black KB. man. KB. That's, that's who. I was like, I hope I run into him. But was he really big? Because I was trying to figure out, like, He's heights. really big. He is? Okay. He's oh. big. I didn't get to be up next to him because they don't let you really be with each other. I'm like, hold on. We yeah. don't need all you tempting people getting together mm-hmm. having orgies. But I hope at the reunion I get to, you know, maybe <laughs> see him. Right? <laughs> Okay, well, welcome back to Cocktails, you guys. Um, besides Temptation Island, what's been up? Um, what has been up? You know, I feel like we've really been on the go, Kiki. And this past weekend, Sunday was, we were supposed to record and didn't, but I mm-hmm. was, it was a blessing because I got to sleep in and it just felt so good. It's hard not to be able to sleep. Mm -hmm. It felt really good to wake up at, I think I woke up at like 10 and then just like made breakfast and Mm -hmm. went laid back down. You know, you can just like lay back down and you really don't have anything to do. Mm -hmm. I feel like lately it's just been like, I don't own my life. Like I go to work. I have obligations after work. I have to go to this. I have to go to this. And I don't ever just like have these moments to do what the fuck I want to do. And that's stressful. Mm -hmm. Like. Finding a good work life balance is really hard. Um, and I don't need y'all laughing because I'd be on live during the day at work. Yesterday, I just was not doing shit. I literally got on Instagram live at like 11 a.m. and I talked to them for the rest of the day. I love it. I just kept talking. I just, it's like going in there and having to deal with those people is hard. Mm-hmm. And then it's like when I come home, I still have other stuff to do. Mm-hmm. It's like sometimes too much responsibility is just stressful. And I just want a real vacation, like a real one. I don't want to do shit. That. 
I want to just relax. I want to drink drinks out of fucking coconuts. I want to hear the birds chirping. I want to lay in a hammock. I want to lay in a hammock. And if I see a fine ass nigga, I want to him to just know, like, meet me in my room. That would be nice, too. Yeah. When you get sad, do you get really horny? I'm so horny, Kiki. Yeah, me too. So then I, I, I also <laughs> admitted that I'm sad. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, sad and horny. You were very sad last week, so I don't think that should come as a surprise to anybody. But I, somebody told me that something about um, sex releases serotonin and it makes you feel better. So sometimes, if you are getting super horny during sad moments, that could be why. And I, should you give in to those hornies? Or you could do something else that will release serotonin, like how you ran. Oh. I think. I don't really know what running does. I don't really do it. It but, did something. Because, bitch, I had my, I've been listening to a lot of Lizzo lately. She's getting me my through. My girl. And I was running and, uh, you know what? I, I almost I, ran today. Running around through Buckhead is, might be my new way to meet Richmond. Because, <laughs> girl, <gasps> niggas was beeping. I was like, oh, we not even out. I don't got no makeup on and I'm looking crazy. But I guess they're like, dang, she has her life together. She's jogging. Okay. I'm really a bitch. Do you go in the morning or in the evening? In the evening after work. I told, I keep trying to go in the morning and like, like do a 5 a.m. run and it never happens. I set my alarm for 5, 5.15 and 5.30 and then I don't now. get up. It's a way to meet men. Now if I can meet it's the men. It's a way if you do it in the right area. Mm-hmm. I was running like, I, I went like up and down towards like Red Martini and then mm-hmm. like went down to the St. Regis and came back and it mm-hmm. was like there was an event going on there was I'm like oh this bitch ain't out drinking she running little do they know little do they know when the sun goes down <laughs> I'm a totally different woman but <laughs> hello I want to try that what you been up to um what have I been up to nothing I was really sad y'all my friend passed away um some person decided to kill him and it just really made me so sad so this weekend I was so dramatic um I was just crying a lot not even just well some of this is dramatics crying is normal being Mm -hmm. sad is normal I made my friend my friends who came over I made them put on robes you know I love a good robe we said they bring their own robes or do you know I have plenty okay so I'm just handing out robes. Do you want a robe? You want a robe? You want a robe? We were singing Mariah Carey songs. We were eating um, very little and drinking probably too much. And so now my skin is fucked up. But I was just like, you know, just sad. And it was just a rough weekend. And then on top of that, um, I was supposed to go to Howard Homecoming this weekend. I've canceled that. Um, but next weekend, I have a baby shower to go to. So I was like, today, I was literally looking up ways to like, Pull yourself out of a funk. Stop being so sad. Are what are some person? things that I can do? Because I don't want to stay in this mood. I know eventually time will help. But, bitch, we already said we don't have that much time. Like, we still got to keep going. And it's like, I mi- I felt bad because I missed Barkia's thing. I sent mm-hmm. her a text um, for her grand opening. And then... um just a few other things that I was supposed to do. I had an interview. Everything was canceled. Mm-hmm. If I couldn't show up looking ugly like I was, mm-hmm. it, I, I was musty. Saturday, I don't even think I bathed my ass, y'all. I just brushed my teeth and started drinking as soon as I woke up. I mean, it was just bad. Mm-hmm. Um, But I was trying to find ways to like feel better and just be more productive and try to look at the silver lining, try to look at positive things. They always say, oh, this person wouldn't want you doing that. They would want you to be happy. <laughs> Are we sure? We don't know because guess what? We can't call them. Mm-hmm. We we can't talk to them. They're not texting us mm-hmm. anymore. So anyway, I spent a lot of time doing that today. And then I just, I never made it to the gym, but I did think about it really hard for a change instead of just letting it be a fleeting thought. And um, I'm trying to get myself together because next week I got to go to Texas. Mm-hmm. Dallas or Houston? Dallas for um, Sandra's gender reveal. So I'm like, okay, well, there's new life. Let me get excited. Mm-hmm. Then I was texting people randomly until I fell asleep just random i love you messages which i realized scared a lot of people they were like bitch what's wrong are you okay and then they're like interrupting my facetime calls and text messages i was like well i'm fine it's just i lost somebody so now i'm just like okay um i'm regretting not saying how i felt yesterday so Um, i need to say it today while i still can i think that's it's really important to tell people that you love them the crazy thing is like i feel like we've been going through a lot of the same things lately Mm -hmm. i told everybody last week my friend passed away she had uh, breast cancer her name is shireen and her funeral was saturday this past Mm -hmm. saturday and 
it was just like it's an it's a it's so crazy because like we know we're all gonna die that is a given that's a fact we're all dying right and I have experienced a lot of death in my life. When I was very young in high school, my brother's best friend was killed. Um, his name was Joseph. And it was he was very close. So uh, he was very close to our family. He was like a brother. And then mm-hmm. his little brother got killed a couple. So people have been dying around me. But it's weird because my mom has always been around to be the one to tell us what to do when, like, these people die and to, like, comfort us. And now that, like, I'm, like, a real adult, mm-hmm. we were, like, me and my friend Nina were, like, comforting our best friend, Brittany, who's Shireen's cousin. Mm -hmm. And it was just so weird because you don't know, you can never say the right thing when someone dies. You just can't. Because there's really nothing you can say. There's nothing you can say. There's nothing you can do. All you can do is like be there. That's not a fixable thing. Mm -hmm. And everybody deals with grief differently. Some people are very sad. Some people are numb. Some people act like they're okay. Some people get angry. And all you can do is just like be there for them in this moment of... (laughs) sadness because you don't you can't make anybody feel better like the whole like they're in a better place everything happens for a reason that don't really that don't help me and i don't it like to say that to people me. just be just <laughs> let me cry and whatever i want to talk about like we would sometimes like crack little funny jokes about shireen like y'all better be looking fly at the funeral or that bitch gonna be mad she gonna i did like- talk about that with some friends i was like okay you know what tell me um let's crack some jokes let's let's be silly for a minute what am i wearing to the funeral what look am i serving that's why my nail color is dark and it's fly. Thank you, girl. I'm going for a Mary J. Blige, not going to cry look. <laughs> um, I've got my sunglasses picked out. Mm-hmm. They kind of remind me of the ones that Lauren London wore, but mine are from Fashion Nova. Hers were probably actually mm-hmm. Celine, not knockoffs like mine. Um, I haven't found the perfect dress, but I do have a cape. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're actually telling us your outfit for the funeral. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. Wow. Um, so that was something we did this weekend. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, let's let's think about something else like i gotta get my mind off of it or i was really telling people how i wanted to feel and then they had to follow (laughs) okay this is really random and i hope we're not making y'all sad we're just having a real ass conversation because of what we've gone through these past couple of weeks but with shireen dying Brittany and i and nina and i we started to talk about like do you want a funeral do you want to be uh we didn't talk about that do you want a funeral what is it called when you get burnt up? I was my mind <laughs> cremated. cremated. My whole well, mind is burnt up. Blank. Do you want to be cremated? And it's crazy because, like, here's what I kind of thought about. Okay. I don't know if I want to be cremated, and I really want to make my decision so people know because I'd feel like, like my mother, she like she has everything set. She doesn't want people arguing and people falling out about what needs to happen. So she has yeah. everything set out. No one will know. That's good. That's responsible. That's very responsible. Um, I know for a fact. I don't think I want the whole, like, wake viewing thing for everyone. Close friends, very close friends, and very close family. If you have to say rest in peace on Instagram because you didn't know I died and you just saw it on a post, I don't think, I just don't like the whole, like, you, everyone just comes to the wake. Everyone, people who haven't seen you in 20 years and you just all get to now see me dead because first of all that's not me and I don't think that's how I want you to remember me and if we didn't know each other that well I don't really think I would just want everybody coming up to me kissing me on my forehead touching me on my hands that's how I'm like alive so it's like I don't really I don't know I don't know it just makes me feel like everyone just comes and stares at you Mm -hmm. and I'm dead it's not me Mm -hmm. my soul is gone but I get that some people just the way that life works out, they didn't. I'm not saying it in a negative way. I'm just saying, like, I think it's just such an intimate moment. So then if you don't want that at your wake, are you going to have a separate service where your body is not there for other people who still want to pay their respects? Yeah, absolutely have a service. You just might not see my body. Just mm. you'll just whatever memories you had of me, that'll be your last memory of me. I think for me, it depends on as vain as this sounds, even when I'm gone. Mm-hmm. What am I looking like? Well, that's also another thing. What am I looking like? Is certified in uh, mortuary makeup. She's it's not. Crazy you I talked to her about that. She's she's not. Yeah, because you've got to do something different because mm-hmm. the blood is gone, so the undertones are off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My uh, great 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 aunt was a mortician, and she My had a funeral home. Is a mortician. Really? Yeah, that's how she got rich. Um, she was a mortician, and her husband was a doctor. I hope they weren't in collusion anyway. <laughs> well they're both gone anyway um i don't i don't know i think if like if i was young and maybe i got into a really bad accident if i'm looking really disfigured burn me up 
burn me up. I don't want nobody seeing that. Mm-hmm. Um, if I was a victim of some sort of, I don't know, hate crime or something, mm-hmm. I uh, burn me up. Mm-hmm. Um, if do I you got want your really... ashes to be kept? Or I like the whole tree thing. You know, you can be you a tree. You told me about that before. Yeah, you can be a tree. Would you want to be a tree? I don't think so. Okay. Do you want what them if, to keep if... your ashes? Do you want them spread out? I think um, I would like to allow them to be distributed to whoever um, in my family. Mm -hmm. And I'll have a list because it will be some family members and some friends and things. A list of people who will be permitted to take said ashes and do what they want with them. Um, But I I mean, I don't want everybody to have a piece of me. Yeah, I've already given a piece of me to too many people. Could you imagine if you were like, hey, look, there was this nigga that I really loved fucking when I when they give you the ashes, send him a little key of ashes. And I like I'm like, I mean, I might. I'm like, hey, Kiki told me to send you these little ashes. Okay, she gone, but she just wants you to remember her. Um, but you know, if I'm just old, right, and um, I pass away, and I don't mind um, people coming. Because it does to me, it doesn't really matter anymore. Like I'm gone. I just don't want to be looking crazy mm-hmm. in the casket. I haven't, um, I haven't been to a lot of funerals where people were young or like they mm-hmm. had untimely deaths. But I, I had. I was trying to see if that was going to pick up in the thing. Um, not a lot of people with untimely deaths, but I have had people who got sick. Mm-hmm. And so some of them had open caskets and some of them did not. My uh, The last person I lost was my uncle and then my grandfather. My grandfather got cremated. Mm-hmm. And it seemed to be that cremation is so much simpler. And you don't cheaper. Have, it is way cheaper. Um, but I, don't, I also don't ever want my family, no matter what the situation is, I don't ever want them to feel like they've got to spend all of this money on this grand funeral. If I I didn't leave the money for them. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want my family stressing out about that stuff. I don't do want. Do you have a life insurance policy? I do. Okay, so do I. I was. This is people. When people die, these it starts to spark conversations like this. And so many. I didn't realize that so many people don't have life insurance policies. Yeah, a lot of people set. don't, and they're pretty cheap. They're really cheap. You can get one for like twenty dollars a month or less. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so like when people don't have it, it's like you don't think you need it because maybe you're not sick. But anything could happen. Imagine if you got in a car accident mm-hmm. and the other person didn't have insurance and it was their fault, or you may have let yours lapse by mistake, or something like anything could happen. You could get sick suddenly. It's like, important. Like insurance is one of those things you don't need it till you need it, and you don't want to be stuck out there like that. But yeah, even I, though I do believe insurance is a motherfucking scam, you still gotta have it. Yeah, and like even with the insurance, it's like still I still want y'all to live a good life. Yeah. So if you can sacrifice my funeral, so fucking what? Y'all go live a good life. That would probably make me happier, especially if people weren't doing well and they could just split up my money. Because mm. I don't know who I'm leaving it to. We all know I'm not trying to have no babies. <laughs> I am. Ooh, well, that mm-hmm. was sad. Sorry, um, guys. Well, we got one more sad thing. <laughs> Weird sex. You said a man is not a necessity. A man is a luxury. Like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. Okay. So it's not, um, well, it's not as sad. This girl was just having sex. So this loud sex was mistaken for a fight. But it led to gunshots at a hotel in Towson, Maryland. So... Um, Police responded for a fight inside a hotel room. Then it turned out it was just two women having very loud sex. It ended with a security guard getting shot at, though. Um, That's what the charging documents say happened on. This was a couple of Mondays ago. It all started when two clerks working at the front desk of a hotel got a call from one of the rooms. During the call, the workers reportedly heard two people fighting in the background, prompting the on-duty security guard to call police. I would be pissed (laughs) if I got shot. And people was just trying to get their rocks off. Um, Police ordered the women. Wait. Um, Arriving officers spoke with the two women who were supposedly in the room when the commotion was heard. Each told police they were not fighting but having sex. They still got kicked out of the hotel and they were just having loud ass sex. Um, I mean, how loud were they? 
I don't know. Why? To think it was a fight, right? So one of the women thought she left a cell phone in the room and she told the officer. So he escorted her back to look for it. When they returned, the other woman, Allison Daughtry, had gone into the lobby and began to argue with the staff. Things escalated and Daughtry pulled out a handgun and pointed it at him. This is when people just need to calm the fuck down. Like, it, it's never that serious. You're getting kicked out of the room. Oh, well, you don't need to be shooting people. What the fuck? Okay, so the guard then tried to take the gun away and wrestle her to the ground, causing the gun to fire and strike a door frame in the lobby. Meanwhile, the Baltimore County police officer was outside feet away, heading back to his, the other one, was heading back to his patrol car when he heard the gunshot. Blah, blah, blah. One of them got shot. And, um... That wasn't even her damn gun, so she's about to get in big time trouble. She wasn't even licensed to carry. Well, I don't know if she wasn't licensed to carry, but it wasn't her gun, and that gun was attached to some other shit. You so, gotta control you know. your emotions, bruh. Like you're about to, you're, you were fucking loud, and now you in jail because you shooting niggas. Okay. Try to shoot niggas, and not just any old body. The damn police <laughs> and the security, like, come on, it's still going. You're tripping. Like, you're tripping. I don't even know what to say about it. It's like, tone it down. Tone it down. Calm down. Meditate. I don't think I've ever had sex that fucking loud. I've definitely had some loud sex. But loud enough to where people thought you were fighting and it sounded okay. Loud enough to where someone did come knock on the door and be like, can y'all stop doing whatever Were you at a hotel? I've had it happen at a hotel and in an apartment. (laughs) <laughs> and, and when it happened in the apartment that's worse was it the apartment or the hotel I get, and one of the two wherever it happened the dude that I was fucking with he didn't even acknowledge that the door was being I was like they're banging on the door hysterically he's like I don't give a fuck I was like yeah. I'll pay rent okay. here well he's like we're grown this is what I was like okay if you say so Saving money on award-winning wine you're guaranteed to love has never been easier with First Leaf. Unlike other wine clubs that guess about your favorite wines, First Leaf uses your feedback and ratings to curate wine selections personalized to your own unique tastes. First Leaf is so confident in the quality of their wine, they even have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means if you're not feeling a particular bottle of wine, First Leaf will cover it completely. So I got started by taking the First Leaf wine quiz so that they could figure out what my wine drinking preferences are. I don't really like super sweet wines. I was able to note that on there. I got to select wines, popular brands of wine that, you know, you may find in your local wine shop or even at the grocery store. And I could select which ones I absolutely love, if any, and also which ones I hated, which was which was really important to me because sometimes it's easier to narrow down what you're open to try by figuring out what it is that you've already tried and don't like. So after I took the quiz and I got to pick the regions that I'm open to, white versus red or rosés, sparkling, all of that jazz, First Leaf then created an introductory six pack of wine for me, all for just $29.95. Y'all, these bottles are typically $20 a piece. I got six for $29.95. 95. When the bottles arrived, I got to taste them and go online to the website and just rate them as I go through the bottles, as I try them, decide which ones I like, which ones I don't like. And then with those ratings... First Leaf then selects the next pack of wines for my next shipment. First Leaf sends out more than 17,000 unique shipments of wine every single month because everybody's tastes are so different. So it's not like they just have three or four, okay, if she didn't like these or if he didn't like these, then this is what we're going to give them next time. No, it is so tailored to your personal taste. And I think that really adds to the value. I want you guys to try First Leaf Wine Club today, where buying great wine is simple. If you sign up with my link, it's in the episode description, you'll get an exclusive intro offer. You're going to get the same deal I got. Six bottles of wine for only $29.95 plus free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash cocktails. C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S. That's six bottles of wine for only $29.95. That's six bottles of wine for only $29.95 plus free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash cocktails. Okay, let's play a little bit of this or that. Okay. I came up with a couple. First one. This is weird, but it just popped in my mind because I love Drake. Okay. Oh, gosh. Kiki. Drake or Meek Mill? 
Drake. Really? Yeah. E- yeah. Even though I just said this yesterday, he seems like an emotional train wreck. Drake? Drake, yes. Oh, I love Every him. time shit goes wrong with these women, he gets so emotional and has to make a song about you. And it's usually not the nicest thing <laughs> in his feelings. Meek Mill, I feel like... He screams a lot. He does... Well, I think just in his music. Yeah. When I've heard him talk, he's pretty calm. But I feel like I'm not going to know what he's talking about. Drake. He's too Philly for me. Drake. Drake yeah. all day. Y'all, please get in Drake's comments. Get in his DMs and tell him Medina Monroe from Cocktails Dirty Discussions loves him. I just want one date. Well, not just one. <laughs> I'm going to say, girl, you know you don't want just one date. <laughs> okay. Would you rather have diarrhea for a day or <laughs> on and off vomiting for three days? diarrhea for a day yeah me too it's not because it's not that but you got a little juicy booty what's up that shit is so uncomfortable though it, it starts to be painful okay this is re- i don't even know why i wrote this but i just want to know oh, who, who you would pick are these all men no these okay. are two girls oh okay that also host a podcast oh okay mandy or wheezy I really don't know. (laughs) You've Uh, been, you took some PR training. (laughs) Yeah, girl, I've been to media training before. Yeah, I really don't know. Um, I think they would both give me very different experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, I have heard reviews on, uh, have I heard reviews on both of them? No, just one. Mandy. I feel like that's the only one there would be reviews on. Well, I won't on. say. Okay. No, but... Um, I would definitely go Wheezy. I just feel like Wheezy would give you the girlfriend experience. You think so? I do. I feel like she wouldn't be as aggressive. I feel like Mandy would be like, shut the fuck up. Eat my booty. Like, I feel like she would just be really rough <laughs> and I wouldn't be able to handle it. I don't think so. I think that... Well, what do I think? I don't know. I really don't look at them like I want to fuck either of them, to be honest. So that's kind of hard for yeah. me. Mm. Well, now I got one for you. What? Lex or Drea? Oh, Lex. Lex? Yeah. Why do you Lex. pick Lex? Because Lex, I, first of all, i they're both beautiful. Mm-hmm. They're both so beautiful. Um, dang, Drea is also fine. Lex, because... Wait, Medina's <laughs> voice got all of... Dang, she's really thinking about it. Looking they're at her computer. The names are not on your computer. <laughs> they're really they're not i'm really looking like Lex and Drake. just trying to focus i think lex because like she has those big old titties lex has some big old titties and she's funny so i feel like we could like also go on a date yeah i think i would go with lex but like drea is not i would also pick her too because she's just fine like i feel like with <laughs> with lex i would let lex do all the work and with drea i would do all the work on her <laughs> that's fair <laughs> oh my gosh um okay hinge or bumble hinge definitely hinge because bumble i feel like I- i'm already starting the relationship off wrong i gotta start talking to you first nigga yeah it's just like this is setting the wrong precedent mm-hmm. because i'm not about to take charge of anything at all that has to do with the both of us and i don't even know you bumble needs to retire but some girls like that shit. Really? I don't. I downloaded it and I tried it and then and then I'm like, I told you. I don't, I don't, don't like say. it. Even they have like little prompts. I was girl. I was being a nigga. I was copying <laughs> and pasting everything and sending everybody the same exact uh, opening message if I was interested in them halfway. And I most of them I wasn't. But I was like, okay, well, bitch, you need to get out. Maybe they just are not photogenic, which I feel like a lot of men are not very photogenic. At all. At you see all. them in person, it's like, oh, okay, this is a good surprise. Yeah, like you're not ugly. Yeah, because I was iffy about it, but I'm also lonely. So, <laughs> so here I am. Here we are. Okay. Would you rather kiss a stranger or kiss an ex? A stranger. A stranger? Because mm-hmm. you don't know, like, it's just like. It's a, more of a surprise. It is more of a surprise. Mm-hmm. And we all know I can guide how it goes with my thumb. Um, <laughs> okay. Henny or tequila? Bitch, that's on my list too. It is. Yes. Okay. Um. Well, today, Henny. It depends on my mood. Mm-hmm. Today, I'm still sad, so I'm drinking Hennessy. But when I feel like turning up, I like tequila. Or when I feel like getting angry, I like tequila. I love tequila. But the crazy thing is, at Shireen's funeral, after her funeral, we went to her house, uh-huh. and I drank Hennessy, and mm-hmm. I was like, "This is for you, Shireen." 
Mm-hmm. That's how I'm feeling right now. This is for my friend. <laughs> Shots or mixed drinks? Shots. I knew you were going to say that. Shots. Um, but I can't take them like I used to. It's really just a fantasy at mm-hmm. this point. I need a little mixer. I need to sip. Most days I got to drink wine. Because when I was taking shots this weekend, it hurt so bad. But I was still just trying to do it like I was 22 again. And I'm not. Bitch, I'm almost 10 years older than that. Oh, my God. It just hit me. The fact that I went out Sunday night, one of my friends invited out, me out. Out, out? I went out, out, Kiki. And I didn't really know Ooh, where bitch. I was going. I just didn't And you had it. to work on my day? You thought she was young, young. I thought I was young, young. I ripped like literally eight shots of tequila. And he was, t- it was a one of the BT hip hop after parties, mm-hmm. whatever that shit is called. And I went, went by myself because it was a Sunday. I know people don't be, with you. people cherish their Sundays, chilling, not doing shit. Mm-hmm. But I just needed to get out. So I go, I we ripped like eight shots. He's telling everybody it's still my birthday because we didn't get to like turn up on my birthday together. So he's telling everybody it's my birthday, birthday, birthday. Bitch, I ended up eating man nappy hair booty that night because I had what? way too many shots. Yes. And you were just feeling like... Like what? nappy booty eating. And I need to stop. Why? Kiki, okay, guys, I told you at the beginning of the show, I don't eat man booty. Okay, well, it's a new dawn. It's a new day <laughs> because you've told us a few times you've been in that booty. <laughs> Maybe you just need to tell them to hit up Manscaped or something. Rated Intimate probably has some products. Something. Shout out to Rated Intimate. Make sure y'all go to ratedintimate.com slash cocktails. Because they got our promo codes up again. They got some toys up again. But anyway. Yeah, but if y'all niggas like y'all ask me, eight, like, at least, it's already a booty hole. At least. He requested it? He didn't. Oh, I okay. Because just... I was going to say, that is very rude. But it's still like, if you well, know you like it. it you need to maintenance your booty hole. But maybe he just feels like most women don't like it to do it. But just in case, you got to stay ready so you don't got to get ready. That is true. I need a wax right now because I'm not <laughs> I need a ready. wax too. So I don't even talk to nobody. But my booty hole ain't nappy. It ain't nappy. Yeah, mine is not. Yeah. Side note, I discovered a, I'm not going to call it gray. We decided it's platinum blonde. Okay. Pussy hair. How did you see that? Because, girl, I thought something was wrong. I was just doing my weekly inspection. I had had sex with somebody. He's not new, but I hadn't had sex with him in a while. So I was like, let me just inspect and make sure everything still looks like it's in working order. And I was like, what is this? What's going on? I thought it was a little lint or something. I was like, I don't really have a lot of white things around my house. But it just must be some cotton. I don't know where the cotton came from because I didn't even have my panties that day. But, bitch, it's a platinum blonde. Platinum blonde. Yes, and it's long. It's longer than the other ones. Like, I already need a wax, but, like... You should be proud of that platinum blonde hair. I'm not a skunk. Why would I be (laughs) proud of that? Because... What you got? It's only one. And that one... There could be more that I just can't see. Just keep getting waxed. And then you don't got to see none of them. Yeah, so I scheduled an appointment. I'm going to go this weekend. Because I just... I can't live my life like this. Okay, do I have one more? Okay, would you rather... Um, you do have a budget. I don't know what the budget is, but just keep in mind it's a okay somewhat tight budget. Not we'll say a hundred thousand dollars. Would you rather spend a hundred thousand dollars on a big wedding or getting you towards your dream home? Oh, I'm gonna go towards the dream home. Mm-hmm. Which I can just play dress yeah. up in my closet. You, I, I feel <laughs> like there are affordable ways to make a wedding look like it was expensive. Or we could skip it, shit. But dream home? That's it's forever. forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was watching a lot of wedding shows this weekend, and I saw people who were spending like $100,000, $200,000 on weddings, and then they go back to their little apartments that were pretty basic, and I was like, if I had the hundred to 200000 I think that I would be like, mm, let's scale this back mm-hmm. and put some more over here. Because they think, weren't getting towards a house at all. They were going for broke. And I also think it's very beneficial to have been a maid of honor before you actually get married. Because you get like a hands-on experience on like how weddings go, how expensive they are, all the stress. And then you're just like, do I really want to do all this? The only wedding, I wasn't a maid of honor, but I was a bridesmaid. Um, in Sandra's wedding, but her and her husband paid for everything mm-hmm. themselves. They didn't really ask a lot of us. Thank God they have great careers mm-hmm. and they are responsible they people. Do. Um, but I can only imagine, like when I when my sister w- was thinking that she wanted to have an actual wedding, and I'm like looking up stuff. I'm like, this is expensive. 
Who's paying for this? <coughs> like who? Who? I'm looking at my mama. She's looking at me. I don't talk to her daddy, so <laughs> I'm just like, I hope he got it, but I just don't trust that nigga. I don't know. But yeah, weddings are pricey. They're pricey. They're really pricey. And it's like in the grand scheme of things, I've always wanted a big wedding. But once you start adulting a lot, like paying your rent on time and shit, paying those electricity bills, buying groceries, um, just just being an adult, the shit I hate, it's like, mm, do I really want this? Do I? If I'm not rich, I probably, or marrying well, I probably won't have a big wedding. It's going to be something small. It might just be a reception. And everybody's always like, that's the expensive part. Yeah, I know, but still. It, they're saying that's the expensive part? I'm looking at venues. Fucking. Yeah, but you need a venue for the reception. Like all the, because they're saying basically like the wedding, you have the wedding, you have your outfits, flowers, whatever, but the reception is the food, the alcohol, venue cost still, DJ, more flowers, cake. And I'm like, well, shit, I want some yeah, shit. This a, <laughs> Maybe a honeymoon. I still do want something. Still, if I yeah, make it to the promise, like, promise land. I just hope I'm a rich man. I probably won't do it if it's not rich. Yeah. I'll just be a long-time girlfriend and let the family <laughs> talk shit. Y'all still shacking up? Damn right. You Is Uncle Earl still <laughs> cheating shit? you worry about that okay i don't have another one do you have another i don't one? either that was my last one okay at native we create simple effective products that people use in the bathroom every day we create products with trusted ingredients and trusted performance not convinced check out the 8,000 five-star reviews from our customers native deodorant is formulated without aluminum parabens and talk it's filled with ingredients that are actually found in nature, such as coconut oil, which is an antimicrobial, shea butter, which is a moisturizer and emollient, and tapioca starch, which will absorb the wetness. There's no animal testings and free shipping and returns. I've been using Native, and y'all know, I've said it a million times, I've been very skeptical about these deodorants that don't have some of the chemicals that I'm used to from using the not-so-safe brands of deodorant. But I haven't had a stench to my body, which is something that people are concerned about. I don't feel the wetness under my arms. It feels great, and I feel so much better knowing that I'm not putting these toxic chemicals on my body and letting it seep inside of my skin every single day. Native can hang with your workout. It can hang with your busy mom life your 16 hour day i've tested it out on some of the hottest roughest days of summer i've tested it out just on my long days tuesdays are my longest days because i go to the office i run my errands i meet with clients i go to the studio record the podcast that is my long day and oftentimes i don't even get to go home and by the end of the day i'm not even musty that's something there's something to be said about native and Less is more with Native. They have fewer, simpler ingredients, so you know everything that's in the deodorant. Aluminum can be linked to some serious health ramifications. Although Native is priced at a slight premium when compared to conventional deodorants, it's also safe and effective, and you don't want to put a price on your health. There's no risk. There's no risk to try Native. They offer free returns and exchanges in the U.S. You can subscribe today and save 17%. That's going to save you $2 per stick, and you'll have Native conveniently delivered to your door every one two three or four months it's totally up to you i like the lavender and vanilla scent that's the one that i've been using for a while um a couple of my friends have tried that one too i think it's a it's a favorite amongst us but they have so many different scents they even have seasonal scents so check those out it was it was just a great experience for me and i also love all of the subscription things i hate going to the store i hate having to go out and get things it's so much easier when i think about it i can just log on to a website and set up my profile put in my preferences and just know that those are little things that I don't have to worry about picking up because it's always the small things, right? So for all of our listeners to get 20% off your first purchase, visit nativedeodorant.com and use promo code cocktails during checkout. Again, for 20% off your first purchase, visit nativedeodorant.com and use promo code cocktails, C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S during checkout. Okay. okay, you guys. So ratedintimate.com is sponsoring um, the next few episodes and they sent us some goodies. Oh, they sent some goodies. I'm so sorry that you're hearing me open this, but like you guys know, let me open it first. <laughs> I really want to see what this looks like. 
So y'all know that I, me and Kiki be into lingerie. I've really been into lingerie lately, like just wearing it around the house, even if I don't have nothing to do. Uh huh. They rated intimate sent me some sexy ass Let lingerie. Let me see you, Ray. That's how it's supposed to look. That little picture. And like, oh, oh, this is cute. Okay, this has a the whole oh the, the crotchless panties. panties, the crotchless panties, and then you this goes over it to make it like sexy. Yeah, the garter belt, the guard. Yeah, you really know the names. <laughs> um, they also sent a vibrator. I'm really excited. It's the Rave by We Vibe. We Vibe is the one that you can link to the app with the music. Are you kidding me, Kiki? No, you didn't know that? I, I thought you requested not, that. I requested it, but I didn't know it did that oh, shit. Oh, yeah. There's instructions. You download the app. It's WeVibe because WeVibe. And you it your says phone this home. is a G-Spot vibrator. Uh, mm-hmm. Tonight, I thought I didn't have plans, bitch. <laughs> Charge that bitch up. <laughs> Maybe you should plug it up now so it could get charging right, by the time right. you get home. <laughs> Let me open this up. Got some... Uh, That's got- a hemp uh, toy cleaning spray. Which is very important. You need to clean your toys. I like that whenever Rated Intimate sends us stuff, they always send the toy cleaner. Mm -hmm. He was like, do y'all need toy cleaner? I was like, yes. Mm -hmm. Because mine gets some use. Mine gets some use. And some of this shit is going in my booty. So. Oh. Really need some of that. I keep um, one of them in the shower now. (laughs) I have one in the shower. Is it the Satisfier Pro, the little purple and white Mine one? Mine is the big one that. Oh, oh, that big white <laughs> that one. Big white one. I keep that one's in, in my shower. drawer for like really, really sad, only nights. <laughs> <laughs> also got a Tango. This is just like a t- quick and to the point vibrator. Powerful yeah, that's a nice mini vibe. Those are my favorite ones because they. I'm just like, I just need it quick. I got some other ones. Maybe I'll bring them. I've already used mine, so I didn't pack them up. But I did get some um, panties that have a bullet vibrator in them. And I can use the bullet by itself, but it has a remote so that I can give it to somebody else. And they control it. I had plans for that that are now canceled. But I'll just just save it. It's charged up and it's ready to go for whenever the day arrives. Stay ready so you don't And I got some lingerie. One of those things we both have they're alike i'm excited i don't know what it is i hope it's the one with the garter belt thing i am too and if you guys want to see the stuff that we have and um our reviews of them just make sure you go to www.ratedintimate.com slash cocktails and both of our reviews and um our items are all listed on there along with a bunch of other stuff and you use the code cocktails to get a discount Get that discount, y'all, because I for real, for real, I feel like Rated Intimate is like my side piece. I mean, I ain't got a main one, but... Okay, I have so many good toys thanks yeah. to Rated Intimate. And they have really good prices. When I've compared the prices of things that I bought in an actual store, like locally, mm-hmm. versus them after we started working with them, I was like, I'm paying double. That's craziness. I know. And they have fast shipping. It's quick. Y'all get on Rated Intimate. Last week's episode, it literally, so many people have been in the cocktails DMs, in my DMs. I don't know if they were in your DMs. They were. People have been sharing their most transparent fuckboy stories with me. And it has actually been like a breath of fresh air. Because obviously we both, people were like, dang, did y'all pay that doctor? We had a whole, uh, (laughs) we had a whole session. I felt like sometimes Dr. Windashi, Windasha? When Dasha. When Dasha did, she was looking at us like, oh, y'all really hurt. Yes. You thought it was a game? This ain't no game, when Dasha. I guess other weeks we try to keep it cute. But <laughs> Not that, that week, week. No, we were fed up. <laughs> fed, and mainly you. But um, cause I, and I, it, that's only because yours is fresh and mine is just old battle wounds. I do the shit every week. I'd be like, well, you know, I really don't trust niggas, so. I was like, I, I, it's so funny because I feel like a lot of our listeners really connect with us and they're like, y'all are our best friends in our heads. But like, I have had moments of you two are my best friends mm-hmm. in my head. Like it's, I've had discussions with people in my DMs that are really helpful, like uplifting and like, thank you for that. Just like we, so, we might not know each other for real, but I'd be feeling like I really know y'all. Sometimes I feel like I'm way too open on this show, mm-hmm. but then I'm like, well, fuck it. Y'all are my besties. 
Yeah, I was talking on live the other day, and then people were like, this is like a whole nother podcast. I said, hey, Loki, it's, it's like the after dark version, because like I feel like it's like a, become like a little community. There's certain people, I don't know them in real life, mm-hmm. but I'm just looking for them when I get on there, and we talk, and then I'm a little bit more vulnerable, and I share more stuff, and like, like even the... Ooh, even this weekend, like people were hitting me up, checking on me to mm-hmm. make sure I was okay. They're checking on you. Is Medina okay? She sounded really sad. Just send her some well wishes. I told everybody, I was like, yes, she's sad. <laughs> Go sa- say something nice. Don't say it's because of that. Just send her some positive vibes because sometimes I think people need that. Mm-hmm. Like when you're going through it and like all you see is like the hurt, whatever that may be that you experience. I know for me, I always feel good when it's just like I get these random people Mm -hmm. being nice and just saying nice things and they don't even want nothing. They're just sending you positive energy. It's like, okay, this this feels good. You know, life does go on. Mm -hmm. Like Drake But somebody sent me a cash app and it don't make no sense. (laughs) Thank you. God bless that person. Well, I mean, look, y'all What a blessing. (laughs) What is y'all are y'all are y'all the real ones. Okay. Um, And it's funny because like I was talking to my mom today, Mm -hmm. literally today. And now since I'm like, I feel like when Carlos and I broke up, we broke up. And then I shortly after that met someone else, which is kind of how my dating life goes. I just I just meet people. And if it's supposed to be a one night stand, that's not really what it is. It turns into a relationship. (laughs) And I feel like now I'm really like giving I'm not going to like date anyone seriously. It's going to. I'm going to try to make it for fun. Okay. Try. My mom was like, do you feel like you doing cocktails is going to like affect how your dating experience goes now? Because the show is, it's grown so much. I was picking up Shy's dog poop the other day outside of where I live. And someone screamed my name from across the street, Kiki. Mm -hmm. Screamed it. I was like, hey. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, my gosh, I'm listening to cocktails right now. It was really cool. It was a great experience. Yeah. Um, But I was like, well, mom, what do you mean by that? She was like, I mean, you just you guys are sharing these very intimate moments about yourself. Do you think that men are going to kind of like look at you and either try to use you or just like not really take you seriously? And I was like, mm-hmm. hmm, I don't think that's fair. It's not fair, but. I do. I don't ever think about them trying to use me so much. I'm saying like use you in a sexual way. Like I'm just trying to fuck. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, That and they won't take me serious. But at the same time, it's like. Whether I was sharing this on a show or not, this is just how I look at it. Whether I was sharing my experiences on a show or not, this is who I am. And the show is only going to give you a part of that. There's a whole lot crazy that I don't like to share because it's it's too much for y'all. Sorry. I love y'all, but it's too much. And I've always, like, had that thought in the back of my head. And then, like, as the show has grown, it's like I'm meeting guys. And then when I meet them and they find out about the show, I can tell when they kind of try and switch up. Like, Mm -hmm. they thought I was one way. But I've kind of had that experience a lot, period. Like, people think that I'm one way. And then once they get to know me, they realize, that I'm not that and so I guess it's a turn off for them they don't want somebody who's open sexually they don't want somebody who likes to have a lot of sex um and take that person that same person serious that's the fun girl and so it's like okay well I can be upset about it but I'm not and I I just I just hope that one day I do meet somebody who is understanding of what it is that we do and that they can respect it because even it's just like, okay, even if I didn't do the show, I would still be doing the same shit or still sharing these same experiences at some point with you. And if you're still going to look at me funny or you're going to think less of me, I don't want you because you don't really want me. You want whatever image you've created in your head. But I do think it's harder. And I think that that's why like, not that we're celebrities, but like the celebrity women and they talk about like how it's hard to meet guys and it's mm-hmm. hard to date because people may use you just for certain things like it, depending on your image or all of these other superficial things. It's like you don't ever get to just be you. And I feel like the more that we grow and the more that people know who we are, the harder it's going to be. And then especially because the show is so sexually explicit, like 
I'm sick of these niggas who feel like they just want somebody who's like super prim and proper all the time. That's not what you want all the time mm-hmm. because you be chasing other shit. Like, cause how did we meet? I, I don't, I'm not places. I just think it's crazy like, for you to take something that I do, which is a big part of what, who we are, but like we record for an hour and a half once a week. And if and you, you think can that's take my life, this whole hour and a half and this one episode that we release once a week and say, that's all she's about. I don't understand people like that because I just feel like men can do stuff like this and it helps them date. Tahoe can get on his show and talk about fucking. No one's going to look at him and be like, that nigga's probably a hoe. They might say that. I was going to say, well. Yeah, they might say that. <laughs> but it's not going to really like affect his dating life in a way. And I think that goes to the double standard of women, period. Because they're going to feel that way about us no matter what. But it's just amplified because we are we talk about it on the show. I'll never forget. I had a friend who called me one day and she was very concerned. And I was very over the fucking conversation. And I told you guys about it a long time ago. But she basically called me and was like, I was listening to your show. First of all, is this story true? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, it is true. That's why I told it. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? And so it was the story about me having a threesome with the married couple. So I told this story a long time ago because when I first fucked them, it was years ago. And so she was like, I I knew that you said that, but I just thought I heard you say it on the show before. I thought it was a joke, blah, blah, blah. I said, why would I tell it as a joke if it didn't fucking happen? And I said, this is what happened. That doesn't make sense. Like, no, it happened. She was just like, well, why did you do that? What were you searching for? Like that sort of thing. And I'm like, I was searching for a threesome and I found it and I fucked them. And now I got a sex show. So I'm going to talk about it. And she was just like, you know, you should consider what you're saying on this show because of your career. This is my career. And this is what I'm trying to make like the forefront, the job that I have during the day. That's not the shit I want to keep. Mm-hmm. That's not where I'm trying to put my energy. It's never been that like that has been over and done with in my mind for a long time that's a placeholder until we can make it happen over here Mm. you know and so she was like okay well what if you meet a guy and he's not into that well he's not into me and that's just what it is like this happened in my life so if this man is turned off by me because I had a threesome several times with a married (laughs) couple I mean that's my truth I don't want to have to hide a part of me just so I can say I'm in a relationship that's never been me. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be that person. So it turns into this whole thing. And then she got mad. And I was just like, well, what are you mad for? I'm mad. You're telling me to kind of hide who I am because basically it's not coming off as socially acceptable by your standards when this is my life. And there are some people who are OK with it because some people are able to have relationships and they're able to be open with their partners. And I just haven't met that person yet. And it's OK. Like, I'm not upset about it. Why are you mm. type of thing? So it's just like it it becomes frustrating when other people feel like we're sharing too much mm-hmm. or we're doing too much. I do hold a lot of things to myself. I keep a lot of things private still. It's just not the nasty shit. That's actually the <laughs> stuff that I'm way more comfortable sharing is when I really care about somebody. I'm I'm not talking about it on the show. Mm-hmm. So like you guys would know about it if we're not having a conversation outside of the show about it. I would just never bring it up because mm. it's like, OK, this is something that I actually care about. The sex shit is just it's, it's fun. It's fun. Got a bus couple nuts. I'm not going to lie, though. Like on these dating apps that I just recently got on, uh-huh. when they asked me for my Instagram, I do not give it to them. Girl, mine is connected so they can just already know See, what the deal is. I, but maybe I'm, I should disconnect it. I don't connect it. And I have told Maybe we should make fake Instagrams maybe with no followers that are maybe private accounts maybe we should because in I, church clothes while i am not ashamed of the things that i have told and will continue to tell you guys i'm i am not but i also do think that i'm gonna wait to let these niggas know if they don't already know just because I don't want you to listen to the show and think that it's an instant fuck or that part that this is the version that you're going to get of me when we if I go on a first date with somebody, I'm actually very shy. And that might be shocking to some people. I get I'll loosen up. But the initial meeting is like, I'm shy. I don't want you to meet me and think that this is going to be like I'm over here like, nigga, fuck this nigga, booty, booty. No, I'm actually like rather like, hey, hi. Very nervous. I even get fucking insecure. Like, I don't want niggas to see me and no. Mm -mm. I feel you on that. But I think like with me, I think that people think that I'm going on a date. 
um, I think that they think I'm going to be a lot meaner than I am. And then they get really excited when they realize how easy I actually <laughs> am, especially with a few cocktails. Like they already know I'm running up the drink tab, right? So then once they're like, oh, well, she's actually like a cool chick. She's actually not super uptight. She's actually about to probably do something crazy because she's probably talking crazy at this point after two or three drinks and it's like i mean yeah but don't get too excited i might just want to go home and go to sleep i might just want to have a good time right here we can flirt i might even get your ass if i'm drunk enough and if you're cute enough if you're well i mean if you're cute we can do pretty much everything but I think once they realize that, then they just get overly excited and it's like, okay, chill out because we're not on the same page right now. Like I may want to sometimes, but usually not. Roy said something interesting before you got here. He was like, he he was like, you know, Medina, you just, he was like, it's so crazy because like you give off wifey material, like you're wifey. Mm hmm. And I was like, but he was like, you know, but, you know, but like you do cocktails. And I was like, what does that mean? I'm still wifey material, my nigga. Wait, what does he mean? But you do cocktails. Like, what was the but? Did he expand on that? The sexual explicit stories that we share. I said, Royce, you realize that most as of lately, most of our stories are old. I have given we cocktails haven't even that had new stories school, like that yeah. from college, from years ago. I was like, to just to to listen to the show and be like, oh, she ain't wifey no more. You don't even know me. You don't know. But me. what about what you're sharing is not wifey? Do they feel? It, and that's what I wonder. And that's what I ask some of my like my guy friends. It's like, do you think that every week we're coming in here talking about a new nigga that we fucked on Monday, and then next week we talk about Tuesday, and then we talk about Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, how we had orgies and shit? Like that's not what's going on. And even if it was though, y'all be wanting that shit. So <laughs> I'm just confused. Is it the grass is always greener on the other side that you can't get to or what? It's really annoying. It's annoying. And I really just wish Drake would make his appearance in my life and come in and save the day. Like, I know that's my man. But people do have like this strange perception, like, uh, which is crazy because people date strippers. I know strippers that have whole boyfriends. Husbands. Hus- Husbands. <laughs> That's how Phaedra Park says it. I was thinking about her earlier. Husbands. Um, yeah, and it's like, okay, so one of my coworkers, DJ Holiday, he always makes a joke about how wild and crazy my sex is and i'm like you obviously haven't even listened to the show what about me is wild like i came on the show and i told you i was uh, i came on their show dinner with the avery's and i was talking about how i'm open to a lot of things and i'm open to trying things but my everyday sex ain't like that i've been very vocal i like the boyfriend experience it's fun Mm. i like some passionate sex we can try some other stuff but my go-to is the passionate sex and he was like you probably be tying niggas up you probably do this actually no (laughs) I'm not trying to tie the nigga up. I mean, I might let him tie me up, maybe, but all we're really doing is handcuffs. Because that other shit, like, no. Um, But people just have this perception that if women are open to talking about sex, that it's automatically some off the wall bullshit. And she well, must let me be not a even whore. say bullshit because it's not necessarily bullshit. It just might not be something that we're into. Yes, or that she's a whore, or that she's for everybody, and it's just like. That's not true. That's not true. And then y'all be for everybody. And you be closed off when it does come time to try some nasty shit. And it's just like, but we still give you a chance. It's, not, it's really not ass. fair. I was really. I, I, the I, double this standards show are so. shouldn't ugh. affect my dating life in a negative way. It shouldn't. And I. I, I don't even care what anybody's thoughts are. If someone is about to fix their thumbs to write me a message on Instagram and say, well, actually, no, it shouldn't. Well, actually, I do want to read an email later. <laughs> did you read that email that somebody sent the both of us? No. I forwarded it to myself because I did want to bring it up because it was in response to the fuckboy episode. And this nigga has some slick shit to say. And I went and found his Instagram. Oh, was not his Instagram also put in the comments? He was like, Medina, how can you be so emotional when you, this is probably just another nigga in your rotation? Was that? Uh, I don't know if it's the same person. I said Instagram. I meant Twitter, but I didn't see that comment. What? Somebody put that on the Instagram page, and I didn't. I was gonna delete it. And I was like, I'll let that shit stay there. And I was gonna respond. And I was like, Well, I'll respond to you. Yeah. He was like, well, I don't even understand why you can, how you can be so sad. You have emotions. You just got another nigga in your rotation. Why? He says, Okay, but like even that. if you did, even if you had ten niggas in your rotation and one of them fucked up, why does that not hurt? I think that he just gave me way more like hype than he should have. I don't really have a rotation of niggas. Not now, at least. I'm building up a team currently. <laughs> but like, Hey, it's recruiting season. 
And I feel like you haven't even been talking about a lot of guys. You've actually been very mute Mm -hmm. when it comes to your personal dating life, which is how I know that you really cared (laughs) because it was like I was saying I wasn't going to share if I cared about something. You're like, no, I'm going to share. And then maybe you thought about that shit and was like, "Mm -mm." (laughs) (laughs) mm-mm. Never mind. But yeah, like sometimes the stuff that guys say, girl, the stuff that some of these people say is just like, Okay, you're free to have an opinion, but why do you think we want to see that shit? I really wonder. Like, he sent us an email. Is it advice? Or it's just he just sent it? It's unsolicited bullshit is what it is. Let me find it. I'm going to pull it up right now, actually. Are you curious about Fifty Shades of Grey? Would you like to watch or experience light bondage and BDSM? On October 31st through November 3rd, join kinkeduptatl.com for their Sacred Sexuality and Sacred Kink Weekend in ATL for singles and couples to educate and explore their kinky sides. For tickets and to get your four-day VIP pass, visit kinkeduptatl.com. Thursday Halloween Kickoff Expo is all about education and demos, perfect for those with a voyeur mind and spirit. Our second night, Friday, Sacred Kink Dungeon Party is for those who want to experience different types of kink, BDSM, or fetish in your choice of private or public sessions. Visit kinkeduptl.com. That's K-I-N-K-D-U-P-A-T-L.com. I can't wait. This is going to be interesting. I've never been to that. Like, Like, Frolicon, I saw stuff, but I didn't get to stay because I had to go out of town. Is it going to be like Frolicon, but just black? And smaller. And I think it's more concentrated on certain things. I feel like Frolicon had, like, a lot of different types of things going on. Frolicon was crazy. It was like Harry Potter, uh, (laughs) fucking Disney. It was crazy. Porn. It was a lot of shit going on at Frolicon. I think that this one is going to be a lot more sensual and more of like, I think the the Thursday night will be one way, but I think Friday night is going to be like a party, probably like that dungeon experience that you had. Do you think that you're going to participate? Participate in what? In anything they... Like, like fucking s- people? Mm-hmm. No. Me neither. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be fun to watch. I'll watch so. all day long. You know, I really want to go to a sex party. But I really want to go with somebody that I'm already having sex with. I feel you. Like, just like a total, total stranger. I don't know that I'm ready for that or even interested. I really want to go to a sex party, also like a private sex party with Drake. <laughs> I just want him to slide in my DMs and be like, what's up, baby? I know you do this sex show. I'm trying to take you to this sex party. And then he proposes to me. You just said you was just trying to have fun. And here you go back with the proposal. <laughs> Bitch, me and you it. need to go to Trapeze. <laughs> My membership is good till November. Can you Sunday. bring a friend? Yeah. Oh, let's hit that thing. <laughs> Let me drink a little hand. <laughs> Y'all, Kiki drinking Hennessy. I'm drinking tequila. We acting like it's a Friday night. It's really Tuesday. <laughs> Okay, but I ain't got far to go. Um, no, we really should make that happen soon. My membership doesn't expire until... I think the middle of November. Let's do it. So we can go and we'll just we'll just see what happens. I wish I could bring somebody I'm fucking, but I want to be extra when we right go now. though. Let's get our makeup done and wear some of this lingerie and just be extra like walking with trench coats and high thigh. I'm not like, coming with the fuck um, are y'all? trench coats, but I got some robes. A robe? I'm to, okay. I'm trying to give a Mariah Carey vibe. Okay. You know I love her. I'm gonna come with a high ponytail. We gonna get Marquita to beat our face. We gonna go uh-huh. in there. They're gonna be like, who the fuck do they think they are? Bitch, those bitches. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent that bitch. Wait a <laughs> minute even when i'm crying crazy i forgot the next verse <laughs> you better have a bad bitch <laughs> wait a minute who lizzo non-committal you really could have i be thinking that sometimes like you really could have a great thing nigga and you fucked it up you fucked it up but whatever okay oh somebody said i want some more toys i want to go to their website go to their website and use code go cocktails you get you a little discount it's exhausting. Yeah. It makes my shoulder hurt, like, right up in here. <laughs> okay. New Jack Legends with a Z at gmail.com. Okay. Decided to send us an email, and he says, Dear Kiki and Medina, I just recently listened to the latest episode of Cocktails, and I feel your pain as I have dealt deadly blows of F-boy to multiple women. 
However, and this is where shit changes up. I thought he was sending an apology. He's not. However, can you see it my way? Speaking for the men. Think about this. Maybe we're just not that into you. Kiki, you have really high standards, and I'm pretty sure if I'm correct, you probably nag to your dates about how high your standards <laughs> are. My standards are on the fucking floor at this point. So, bro, what you talk about? Um, and meanwhile, as annoyed as you make them, they still trying to hit. So why not baby baby you until the goal is complete? As for Medina, I know women. And that being said, I'm 100% sure you are probably clingy as hell. That's I've an- said that multiple times. Exactly. And then he says that's anointing, but I'm sure he meant annoying because he can't spell. Okay. <laughs> However, you have a lot of sex appeal and probably know how to please real good. That doesn't mean I want you to be my wife. It means that I want to sex you until the infamous question, what are we? Then I have to go. Good day to both of you ladies and good luck on all your future endeavors. Also, Medina, congratulations on Temptation Island. I don't even know what that is, but I want to watch it to support you. P.S. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Much love sent from my iPhone. I'm just like, what made you compose this email? (laughs) I I don't. My nigga. What? Send a picture of yourself. Well, I found the picture because I Googled his email and oh, you went did? to Twitter. He doesn't need to send a picture of himself. But what you should do, I think, is also <laughs> consider the fact that, like Medina said an hour ago, um, we only give you a piece of who we are. And you may not like that, but that doesn't mean that we're totally oblivious to somebody being into us or somebody lying to us Mm -hmm. or somebody being a totally different person like a lot of times i don't think that maybe you realize this you probably do you just wanted to send this um a lot of guys will put on and be a person and they're not really that person Mm -hmm. maybe they do it because they're just not into us but why is that our fault you're the one who chose that your game wasn't strong enough to get what you wanted out of the situation without being honest Mm -hmm. you can get what you want sometimes when you're honest and when you are that person but if you're not you got to get over that shit maybe we're just not into some casual bullshit if we want something more maybe we're not into somebody lying to us and pretending to be somebody that that they're not if if i'm annoying and a nag and medina is annoying and clingy that's who we are i'm not a nag but if that's what you think we are then that's what we are like stop trying to fuck with us go fuck with somebody else i'm very much clingy if i like you if i like you but th- you you're gonna and know it's not that like already. you're gonna be clingy to everybody and those niggas be clinging on to you i've seen it with my own damn eyes <laughs> so it's like you're assuming and then as far as this high maintenance, i'm not high maintenance i get really annoyed when people say that shit that, that that makes me pissed off but it's like i don't go on dates with niggas who are complaining about paying for shit mm-hmm. i don't go on dates with niggas who don't have um some money Mm -hmm. to take me to the places that I talk about that I want to go like that's not really happening that's not my experience I just argue with niggas on Twitter and Instagram and apparently in our email about things like that like a lot of these men are established men they have no problem whining and dining us they have no problem taking us to the places that we want to go and showing us a good time at all because they work very hard and they want to reap the benefits and that's just normal that's like when you I went on the date the other day you're like where you going I was like oh just chops and I'm not even trying to I'm not even trying to you were like just because that's what the fuck happened yeah it's medina's like oh i'm just going on a little date just to chops i was like well that's not just chops like chops is a good place like just cheesecake factory is a just i just was like (laughs) that's a nice restaurant that's like that's acceptable there's nothing wrong with taking medina to chop and you're not about to make me feel bad for wanting to go to just chops you're not gonna i am those days are gone you're not gonna make me feel i would like i had them days we're not going on dates with niggas no more that are complaining about who's paying for the date that's not my vibe and honestly i'm not meeting niggas like that i don't attract that i don't want that and so somebody like you probably would just meet us and we would not be interested and then you are going to send an email and have an attitude or whatever the case may be it's like that's not the problem the problem is something a lot deeper and some other issues but that's not it so to say that i'm complaining and then medina is clingy those niggas be liking her and they want her around a lot these niggas like to whine and dine me and they like to spend the cash and what's wrong with that i don't have to tell them how to treat me because they already fucking know so nigga new jack city (laughs) 
<laughs> and that's just that on that. New Jack City with your bitch ass. I'm, I'm not even gonna. He's stupid. Like. Is there something that interferes with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals? If so, BetterHelp Online Counseling is there for you. BetterHelp offers licensed professional counselors who are specialized in issues such as depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, and more. Connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. Anything you share is confidential and it's so convenient. You can now get help at your own time and at your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions plus chat and text with your therapist. If you're not happy with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time at no additional charge. Best of all, it's truly an affordable option. And for Cocktails listeners, get 10% off your first month with discount code COCKTAILS, C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S. So why not get started today? Go to BetterHelp.com slash cocktails. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash cocktails. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What do you want? What do you want? Yeah, let's go to Indecise Diane. What you got for us, girl? All right, Diane. So what cute little date idea do you have for us this week? Hey, ladies, it's me, Indecisive Diane, and there's this cute little Italian spot. Literally, you're going to feel like you're in Italy. You're going to love it. You know, that's where my people are from. Really, Diane? Yes, girl. So here's the name of the place. It's called Soto Soto Restaurant. Literally, it's a cozy eatery. They got pasta. They got risotto. They have all the other Italian classics. You're going to love it. They have an amazing wine list. Go here with somebody that has a little money that's not going to complain about who's paying for the bill because it's not that type of place. They close at 11 p.m. They open at 530. Here's the address. 313 North Highland Avenue, Atlanta, Georgia, 30307. Make reservations because that's the type of place that it is. Okay, girl. Thank you. No problem, ladies. Bye. I've not been to Soto Soto. I've never either, but bitch, I'm trying to go. I love I some Italian food. Sushi. I made a little pasta dish last night. Uh-huh. It was really good. And I just like was freaked it? it and like did uh-huh. like a white sauce mixed with a red sauce. And then I put like spinach in it and like diced tomatoes and like made it spicy. Mm-hmm. And was I put like meat? a bunch of lemon juice. No meat. <laughs> it was it's so a side good. dish. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know I can't eat a meal without me. I tried to be a vegan for a week and that shit lasted three or four days. I mean, I lasted way longer than I thought I would. So I'm proud of myself. I still have a few meatless meats in my freezer. Okay. Um, so well this one is a cocktail. I got no well, I'll let you go. I printed I actually printed one out that I archived. Oh, oh. Okay, so we've got some emails um, from the advice. Make sure that if you guys want some advice from us, you hit us up, askcocktails, C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S, at gmail.com, and maybe we'll read it on the show. Okay, so this young lady said, the, the subject line says, advice, help, I think my celibacy is turning me prude. Uh-oh. It probably is, girl. Probably. She said, hey, ladies, call me Christina. Love the show. Y'all are awesome. I've been an active listener for about two years now. Keep them coming. I have been celibate, celibate for two going on three years now. And until recently, it's been a struggle. I thought I was horny in my 20s, but what I'm experiencing in my 30s is a different type of horny. <laughs> After years of being played and betrayed... I have chose to just shut myself off from intimacy. In the past, I had more relations than relationships and many experiences were traumatizing. My soul was tired, but you sound like me. I got motherfucking PTSD. Now, I find myself unable to talk to men. I get nervous and jittery. Side note, watching porn is even uncomfortable. Damn. (laughs) After about three minutes in, I'm like, this shit is freaking disgusting. I really want to be a sexual being and feel sexy. 
but I don't. Most recently, I met a guy. He's cool, but not really my type, but I'm open. There is some sexual tension between us. However, when he makes se- sexual remarks to me, I become so defensive and offended. Like, damn, do you only want to smash? This guy is also my coworker. Ooh, so it's a bit forbidden. I'm very hesitant to pursue anything with his ass. How can I become more direct with men without seeming like I want to get hitched and settle down by tomorrow? Bitch, you sound like me. Okay. (laughs) Do y'all think men just want to have sex? If my email seems all over the place, I'm sorry. Hope y'all read it. Take care, ladies. I attached my photos. Traveling is my passion. Amore cocktails. And I didn't know which email was active, so I sent the letter to both. (laughs) Bye. She's cute. Bye, girl. Let me see. Bye, girl. Um, Here's the thing. Do niggas just want to have sex? I think they do. Can you get more than just sex? Absolutely. I feel like depending... <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. I feel like... Depending on what your connection is with the... You, you need a connection if it's going to be more than just the sex. Yeah. Most of my situation... Like I told y'all, I be having one night stands and they turn into full-blown relationships and it's because of the connection. That nigga still just wanted to fuck. He just didn't know he was going to fall. <laughs> and neither did I. Like, quite frankly, I think it just depends on what y'all's connection is. But, like... I, I, what else did she say? She was like... I, I don't understand why watching porn is uncomfortable. I'm confused. I was very confused the whole letter, honestly. Why is porn uncomfortable? Did she say? She just said after about three minutes in, she's like, this shit is freaking disgusting. But maybe just pick a different category. Yeah, like, if you don't like the type of porn, there's so many different types of porn. Like, maybe you need to go to the female-friendly tab. Or the popular with women, depending on the site that you're on. Yeah. That's what I would do. You might want something a little bit more romantic. There's somebody, her name is Erica Lust, and she um, has porn that's created by women, uh, mainly for women, and it's a lot less graphic and more romantic. You might be into that. I also don't understand, and I know you sent the advice and we're supposed to give it to you, but y'all know we're not professionals. I mean, we're not... Um, I don't know why the guy that you're interested in when he is making sexual remarks to you, you get defensive. It's probably because you're trying to be celibate and and maybe tell him that. Yeah, like he doesn't. He, maybe he doesn't know you're trying to be celibate. You should because he's probably confused. I would be confused. I actually am confused as to why you're celibate. I am too. Like maybe the answer here is our advice to you is don't be celibate, bitch. Just or go to church more, and meet somebody in the choir. Meet somebody in the choir, or be more selective about who you're sleeping with. You don't have to actually be celibate. You sound like you're really trying to fuck somebody, and you're just going through a bitter moment like me. But bitch, don't be bitter. Don't you do it? Yeah, it's a bad idea to be bitter. You don't want to be like that. It's a lonely, lonely it is. place. And don't turn prude. Prude is definitely no fun. Like, bitch, don't do that. Like, just just chill out and find some shit you like. Okay. Um, next one. This uh this subject line is please keep me anonymous. Thank you. Hey ladies, I just started listening to your podcast about a month ago, and I'm almost caught up to the 2019 episodes. I've been listening religiously at work, and it's my guilty pleasure. I love you both. Keep up the amazing work. Thanks, girl. So here's my story. I started online dating again after being single for almost four years. I met someone last month and we've continued to date ever since. I really like this guy. I'm 28 and he's a few years older than me, has his shit together, and he is looking to be in a serious relationship just like I am. We've consistently spent time together since meeting two weeks ago and we've enjoyed getting to know each other. Things got a little steamy after our our second date and we almost had sex but i put the brake on things before we went too far wait what okay that's not the end sorry um i have we are just fast because both of our heads were just like what's the problem things going good you got his shit together he older than you like you like him he like you like bust that pussy open (laughs) okay um i have two reasons for this Number one, I'm not yet on birth control. I'm going to be getting back on it later this month. And two, I want things to be exclusive. 
use a condom. I want things to be exclusive between us before I have sex with him. Oh. Okay. We have great chemistry and I truly see a future with him. And at times I think he could be the one. It's crazy that I have these feelings about him already, but I just don't want to mess things up by us having sex too soon. Ladies, do you think it's unrealistic to wait to have sex until he and I are exclusive? I have to admit, it's so hard not to give in to temptation. Sincerely, seeking exclusive dick. Do I think it's, do we think it's too hard to hold out on having sex with a guy? That's basically, that's the question. Unrealistic. Unrealistic. To To wait to have sex until he and I are exclusive. I personally think, yes, it is. I mean, he just try to put. The, I mean, it what depends on who exclusive? are you? Who who are you? For me, it's unrealistic. It is like unless like right now the the dating path that I'm going down, niggas are disappointing me so badly that all these toys that I'm getting from rated rated intimate, it's probably they're gonna suffice for some dick. <laughs> but like, <laughs> if he didn't do nothing wrong and everything's going right. Mm-hmm. I can't really say that I'm going to like hold out until we're exclusive. Yeah. But the fact that you even said that, it sounds like you maybe need to hold out until you're exclusive because your feelings might get hurt. Yeah. You're not ready to play in the big games, yeah. in the big leagues. It's you got to stay in the little leagues. And if you want to be <laughs> exclusive, it doesn't mean that it can't happen because it definitely can happen. Now, where are you going to find that nigga? I don't know, but it doesn't sound like it's him. It could be. I don't know. Have a conversation. Talk to him. But be prepared to have somebody tell you, I'm not ready to be exclusive, but I do want to put my dick inside your vagina and wiggle it around. He might not have those requirements. (laughs) But, um, yeah, be be prepared for that shit. Because eventually it's going to come. After three times of sex with a condom, that is definitely going to come if he doesn't do it the first time. So that's sad on that. I don't know, girl. I think you need to send that into a Christian uh, podcast. Yeah, they'll have better advice for you than we do. But I do think it's a little unrealistic. But apparently, people think that we're whores, so and nags and clingy Clingy. bitches. (laughs) And and we already are getting our feelings hurt. So you don't want. I mean, we don't know. Just just try everything and write it back. Yeah, send it into um, TD Jakes's email. He got a podcast too. It's called The Potter's Touch. I listen to it every day. I listen to sermons about relationships. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. So, I don't fucking know. It's yeah. called The What? The Potter's Touch? The Potter's Touch. touch. Mm-hmm. The, there's a song that goes, It's the probably going to cost you. Touch, the Potter's Touch. I listen to it every morning. <laughs> I think Raven listens to that. I, I listen her. to The Potter's Touch every morning. I read our daily bread. Because my grandpa always gives it to us. <laughs> so our daily bread is like a little bitty book. It's like a daily Bible study book. I and it has verses that. and like stuff. Yeah. This is real oh old God. school. Okay. Anyway, next. Okay. Do you have another one? <laughs> An advice? I've got one printed mm-hmm. out. Do we want to do another one? Or do we want to move on to cocktails? Let's move on to cocktails. It's 1019. Yeah, we kind of real drunk. over. I'm hungry. This is a Hennessy. And the tequila. The Kirkland's tequila. And I'm tequila. not fucking done. Somebody just tried to play me on the live talking about y'all stay drinking Costco's tequila. You motherfucking right. We Damn come right. We are budget every conscious. Week. Okay. The bitches. Uh, Send us a bottle. Of Casamigos. Mezcal. Well, Kiki don't like Mezcal. Casamigos. Well, whatever you send, I'm going to drink it. I mean, that's curtains. not my request, but don't act like I won't drink whatever's in sight. Talking about the hangovers are excruciating. You know the fuck they're not? No, Kirkland's they're not. Is good. What Kirkland, you don't understand is it, they just put Kirkland's on it. It's still like a good tequila. It is. Boy, fuck you. Okay, that's my <laughs> okay. new thing. I'm I'm making merch that says, boy, fuck you. <laughs> and we just gonna hand it out for Christmas. It'll be ready shortly, you guys. Okay. This is a cocktail. So wait, did you pick the one out that has your name in it? No. Okay, so the one that I have, I just want to make sure we're not reading the same Mine, one. Mine, the thing says my threesome from hell. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh gosh. Okay, mine says Medina got me fucked. So you go first. I hope it is not someone I had sex with and they wrote it. It's not. I read the Okay, I got so scared. I was about to say, really? This is your heart dropped. My heart dropped. I was like, God damn, I was eating booty this weekend. Okay. 
So the subject line for this cocktail is my threesome from hell. Hey, ladies, love, love, love the podcast. Had one of my cocktails told previously and of course had to share this latest horror story I call a threesome. So me and my guy had been talking about having a threesome, but had an issue with picking a girl. And almost coincidentally, I got a message from a friend slash crush about a recent first time threesome she had. Now, mind you, the details she's giving me are almost simultaneously making me wet as we talk. So I throw my hook out there to see if I can get a bite and say, me and Bay have mentioned your name in a threesome, but didn't know if you'd be down. Her reply was, why did y'all ask? Why did y'all just ask? So in my head, I'm thinking... All parties agree this is about to be fun. Mind you, she's been flirting and dropping hints for years. So I'm like a kid at a candy store at this point. So fast forward, date planned, time set. She comes over, we drinking to lighten up the mood. And of course, there's a few blunts going around. So we all land on the bed talking and she grabs my face and kisses me. My guy runs to the bathroom. I begin to undress. She proceeds to pull down the covers, climbs in the bed, fully dressed. Of course, I'm confused. I'm fully unclothed and she's fully dressed from head to toe under the covers. So I ask, was she going to get undressed? By now, my guy comes out of the bathroom fully nude, ready to go. Her reply is, oh, y'all serious? (laughs) Bitch, <laughs> yes. At that point, I should have went ahead and ended the night. But at this point, I'm horny and naked, so no turning back. So she proceeds to get undressed, but clearly struggling. So we assist her with getting undressed. Y'all, I can't make this up. She goes, y'all are so nice. I'm still trying to get some at this point. I'm just thinking with my clip. So he goes down and starts giving her head while I'm kissing her and trying to get the beautiful, get these beautiful titties out this maximum security prison she calls a bra. (laughs) About 10 minutes of him giving her head and me sucking her titties, she comes and we switch. So by now I feel completely in charge because we already discussed I'm leading this show. So I tell him, lay down and instruct her to get on top. She goes, I don't do that. We both are confused. So I say, you don't what? You don't what? She says, I don't ride. So I try to convince her to ride. I'll teach her, just sit on top and we'll do the rest. But she is at this point refusing to get on top before we both, before we're both working with a limp dick. I tell him, hit her from the back and push her face in in my pussy to eat. Okay, this should have just ended. (laughs) Y'all, I can't make this up. All I felt was teeth. So (sighs) the whole time, I'm just hoping this girl don't bite down on my clit. She comes and I'm like, switch. It gets worse. Y'all, she says, damn, can we take a break? Like, Soldier Boy on The Breakfast Club. I said, a break? At this point, I'm pissed. You're the only one who got dick and now you want to take a break? Hell no. Nah. At this <laughs> point, I just want it to be over. So I had to work overtime on head because the whole time I'm doing it, she's giving commentary and staring from the side of the bay. As soon as it got hard, I hopped on top and rode my negative victory. Ooh. I took over and she is knocked out on the floor next to the bed. I asked her about what happened and she said she was too high. That's really a thing. She shouldn't have smoked, whatever that means. I just hope that the next female we bring into our bedroom participates equally and like a team player. Your lawyer, your loyal listener. Well, I think next time you need to have a, a just a brief discussion about what everybody's wanting because y'all kind of just like jumped into it. Like, yeah, y'all texted about it. But when you get down into it and, and everyone's at the same place, you got to make sure everybody's feeling it. We had some very in-depth conversations, video examples, porn references. Yeah, you got to make a group chat, make sure ain't nobody getting mad. (laughs) (laughs) This one says Medina got me fucked. So. Medina got me fucked. It's got the winky, like, tongue out. Okay. And a harp. Okay. Okay. Hey, queens. I love both of you ladies, but Medina, me and my girl were on your live. Hyping you up earlier. Just in case you got confused, she said October 1st, 2019, while I was at work. Bitch, when I got off, she licked me down. 
As soon as I got home, she grabbed me by my neck and said, so you like Medina, huh? And I moaned, yes. She said, bet, and started tonguing me down. She worked her way from one set of lips to the next. She kissed and licked and sucked every inch of me until I damn near had a seizure. She stopped after my third orgasm. Yes, third. Pulled her sweats down and boom, the strap. I knew the strap was coming with the sweat. Ooh them sweat even my damn phone them fell out who lord okay i usually don't like penetration but that night my pussy was craving that shit and she could tell she made me beg for it and she was teasing me for too long and my pussy was throbbing so before i knew it i jumped on the plastic dick like plastic dick <laughs> i jumped on the plastic dick and started riding her like crazy i choked the shit out of her while i was riding kissed her and spit in her mouth a first this spit must have been a turbo booster because she flipped me over i arched my back and started throwing this micro booty back like never before <laughs> i came immediately and she kept going by this point i'm whimpering for the dick we changed positions to the frog google it try it thank me later and she starts going crazy in my shit then after that she starts acting like she's tired no ma'am i flip her over onto her face and start licking her like crazy i'm moaning she's moaning and she comes after a while then she keeps right in my face and starts playing with my pussy uh uh-uh, it's my turn so i tell her to stop she doesn't listen and i come again i flip her once again and after i'm done seizing lol and tell her not to move i shimmy over to our magic dresser with all of our toys pull out a vibrator and start eating her pussy while inserting the toy in and out Y'all of her was getting it in. okay <laughs> she starts moaning like crazy i'm moaning and we both come together eventually After God knows when, we end up falling asleep, ass naked, talking shit because we both fucked the shit out of each other in the name of Medina. I hope this is worthy of airtime, but basically, I wrote in to thank you. Medina, you are single-handedly responsible for the best plastic I've ever gotten. Your fine ass blessed me indirectly. Thank you, bitch, from the bottom of my pussy. I truly appreciate it. Stay beautiful. And Kiki, you're fine too. We gonna fuck with you in mind next time. That's a promise. I'm just waking up 14 hours later. I missed a whole ass work assignment and all. But I called in sick because my pussy hurts from all that action. Thank you, ladies, for the great content you give because y'all have made up, made me spice up my sex life. I'm horny as fuck writing this though, so I'm about to wake my girl up. Adios. P.S. I will flip you if you let me. Amen. She'll flip us? Yes. Like, actually flip us over? Mm-hmm. I will flip you because she flipped our girlfriend over after that plastic. All right, y'all. I want to hang up because I want to say the live and read y'all's comment. Bye. <laughs> that was uh, th- I, that was funny. That was amazing. Thank you so much for that. Jeez. Girl, she was on my line. She's like, please read my letter. This is the subject line. I was like, let me proofread it. That was amazing. I said, oh, written. bitch, we reading this. We reading this. She was really going. And in the way you read it, like... <laughs> Uh uh-uh, uh, and there's more. Turn your ass over. I ain't done. It's my turn. Okay, you talking about we both looked at each other and fucked the shit out of each other, and y'all was just tired, and you done woke up 14 hours later. Let me. I ain't got no 14 hour uh layover dick in a minute. Where I got a layover between when she I can said get my I life a together. whole work project. Y'all <laughs> was not playing. We gonna have to start charging for the lives. Wait, are you going to um? Are you open to going on dates with women for the blind date project? I think so. Let's try it. Because uh, I'm asking because a few women have already asked. I said, well, I think it's only men, but I'm going to check. I'm open. I'm open. Well, all right, bitch. We about to see what you got in store. Because the ladies is ready. The niggas is shy. I texted you and told you I had a date. Now he getting shy. I was like, and it's not about going on the date. He really wants to date. He don't want to talk about it. What? What? I don't know. He's probably being a hoe out here in these streets. That's what I naturally assume. If you can't talk about it, I'm like, you can't tell nobody you getting paid. Like, who gives a fuck? Lie like you always do, nigga. Like, just go on this date. What if like, I got say somebody? Who he is huh? that defeats the purpose. Yeah, no, you've got to be seen. Yeah, you don't have to say a whole bunch about your life, but you've got to be seen. Yeah. I was like, no, ain't no anonymous because ain't nobody gonna pay for that yeah, shit. Yeah, that's crazy. Tell him, don't be nervous. I did. I mean, I'm still working on it. Tell him he might get some pussy out of it. No, I'm playing. Don't tell him that. I did tell him that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bitch. <laughs> Real vulnerable right now. You I was like, look, she's not her. looking for nothing serious. You already seen what she look like. I know she gonna like you. I've heard your dick is good. I've never tried it, of course, because I'm not gonna hook you up with nobody I fucked. But I've heard good things. It's just like, hey, you got a job. You not short. 
He be working out. Ooh. And I'm just like, I know. I, that's why I was like, bitch, I got a winner. I hope it's a real winner. You can put the whole dick in it. Well, I wasn't telling nobody that because I don't want nobody to think I'm pimping you. <laughs> but I was just like, you know, it might be mutually beneficial. You want fun. I don't know what the fuck he wants, but we're not going to have a problem when it comes to taking you to a nice place. <sighs> So, y'all, when we start this dating project, it's going to I feel like this is about to go viral. I honestly do because it's going to be hilarious. Well, bitch, we might have to just date women. I don't know. It's about to be the The bitch is ready. I'm like, okay, they are ready. They're not complaining about shit. They just like, bitch, I just want to go where you want to (laughs) go and how you like your pussy. And, you know, it's just like it's just making things a little bit more tempting on that side. Might have to cross over. All right. Well, it's been real. This is a great episode. I wasn't sure yeah. how it was going to go because yeah, because we weren't we very was tired prepared. and mm. sad and sad. Um, but remember, if you have any juicy ass cocktails to send us, send them to us at cocktails at atl at gmail dot com. Just pick an email. Any? Well, no, no, not an email. DM us separately if you got somebody who is open mm-hmm. to the blind date project that we're doing. And we're saying DM us. Like, if you have someone for Kiki, DM him to me. If you have someone for me, DM it to Kiki because we still want it to be a blind date, like a traditional blind As date. My, now, if I already know the nigga, but. They still send them to Medina. Yeah. I don't she know still who won't that know would until be. she gets on yeah. the with him. Because pickings are slim. Yeah. You guys, don't forget, uh, if you haven't already watched Temptation Island, watch Temptation Island by the time this comes out tonight. And uh, shout your girl out. What's up? Yeah. And make sure that you visit Kinked Up ATL. There's no E in that. Just kinkedupatl.com to get your VIP tickets and also check out ratedintimate.com slash cocktails to look at our products that we've actually tried and reviewed and then you can browse and see what else they have. Um, use code cocktails and you'll get a discount on your order. They have really great stuff. We've been trying out their stuff for a while. They just sent us some new batches. So we're going to keep updating you guys on what we have. And until next week, you guys, Bye. goodbye. I'm sorry. But the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.